we know, we, what I say we know of 301 women who told us they were going to have an abortion and then changed their mind when they saw their baby or right. not necessarily on the bus that they saw it. They, sometimes they leave crying, you know, but we follow up and follow up and follow up until we get them connected with community resources or until they just quit answering our phone, you know. And so I say that we know of because I've had this experience twice where women have come up to me with their babies and said, your bus saved my baby. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. And welcome back, everybody, to Tactics, where speech isn't violence, tolerance isn't love, and disagreement isn't hate. Thanks so much for being with us on our program for a momentous day, our big Roe versus Wade. Roe is finally done. It is over, and that is our big abortion special. My next guest uh, is going to be Robin Blessing, and she is somebody that is on the front lines when it comes to this fight, you know, you have a lot of people that are activists do protesting. This is somebody that is on the front lines when it comes to abortion uh, and, and not by being somebody that necessarily is, uh, you know, necessarily marching or something like that. Just somebody that uh, shows people the truth and, and helps women get free ultrasound. So without further ado, let's go ahead and meet her. Robin Blessing, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you so much for having me, Caleb. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you. I actually met you not too long ago when you were speaking here at Faulkner University, and you have a really interesting backstory, and I think that that might actually give the audience kind of a better feel for what got you involved in this issue in the first place and why it's so important to you. So if you would share a little background about your story. Wow. Well, up until 2016, I was actually uh, pro-choice. I thought that... Um, Everybody should butt out of everybody else's business, that abortion was a woman's choice. And I actually had an abortion in 1988. And I know that from talking to different people that people think that it's all young teenage girls that are having abortions, but mm -hmm. I was um, in my thirties, had a five-year-old son, was married and had just moved to Alabama. And it just, I just couldn't see myself being pregnant. I always tell people, I never ever thought the word baby. I just told my husband, I cannot be pregnant. We had only been in Alabama like about six weeks with the new business. So I looked in the, back then it was in the phone book. I looked in the phone book, got the number. We went down there. Um, and I remember asking the lady at the time that they were doing whatever pre-op stuff. I don't remember at all, but I said, I caught this early enough, right? Like it's, I'm going to take Tamiflu or something. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And she said to me, oh, we don't make those kind of judgments. So I had the abortion. It was a horrible experience. But I do remember leaving there feeling relieved. I did. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward 28 years later, I'm working as a secretary in labor and delivery. And um, this doctor, Dr. Matthew Phillips, comes in and starts. I've, I've known him for four years now working together. And he said, what kind of business did you ever, uh, what kind of ministry did you ever do? And believe it or not, I was a children's minister um, at a church on staff for 14 years. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing I want to say to everybody about abortion. Nobody, if you don't talk about it, then women think that it's fine or they may think it's the unpardonable sin. But, you know, if nobody talks about it, nothing's ever done. So anyway, he starts talk, telling me, he says, I want you to come work on my ultrasound bus, come volunteer. And now I'm, I'm having to, 28 years later, tell this man that um, something I've never told anybody. I said, well, I said, I've had an abortion. And uh, I started crying. I, I didn't even know I felt sad about it. Um, and he said, oh, Robin, God will take that sin. And, and right there, I can't remember anything else he said, because I'm thinking, what do you mean sin? Nobody in my church ever talked about abortion. No, I've been in church my whole life. Nobody ever talked about sin. And um, so I agreed, my husband and I agreed to go look at the ultrasound bus the next night. Mm -hmm. And when uh, I stepped up on that bus, there's a big screen TV in the front and the back where we project the ultrasounds. And when they're doing what they were doing that day, which was like marketing, showing the bus around, um, they had a loop of ultrasounds from Dr. Phillips' office. And I stepped up and saw that nine-week baby and I said, oh, Father God, what did I do? 
because nobody had to tell me it was wrong at that state at that point i saw that baby and uh, 28 years before they weren't doing an ultrasound before you had right. abortion. so now uh well now uh abortion is outlawed in alabama but until last friday the rule was you had to have an ultrasound before you could have an abortion mm -hmm. and you know i tell people you can't unsee it once you see it you can't unsee it the truth is right there well, you know, that's such something that's so important to uh, women when you look at the statistics and whether or not they decide to go through an abortion. I believe it's somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of women that once they see that ultrasound, if they actually see their baby there in their womb, they decide not to go through with it. And so that's why it's interesting. You, you hear people on the other side of the aisle constantly talk about abortion and say, well, ju we just want it to be safe. We want to follow the science, all these taglines. But I mean, there's nothing more scientific medically than having an ultrasound and, and seeing what's in there. And that's the thing. We want women to be able to make informed decisions. And so I never understood why people on the pro-abortion side, regardless of what uh, they felt about whether abortion should be illegal or not, why they wanted the woman to be kept in the dark, why they didn't want her to see what was actually going on inside her own body. Right. That's, that's such a huge part of what we do because you're exactly right. 89% of women who see their own baby on ultrasound will choose to parent, even if they were abortion determined. And, you know, we're not on the ultrasound bus that I work on. We are not trying to uh, judge people or convince them or tell them they're wrong. We just show them that ultrasound and we believe the Holy Spirit does the work because like I said, when you see it and you know that's your baby, um, the thing about being pregnant is, is that, you don't, you know, I think you're like, I can't remember, I want to say 15, 16, 17 weeks along before you can feel your baby kick. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can convince yourself it's nothing, but we can see the baby, you know, five or six weeks, we can show them their baby, see the heartbeat, hear the heartbeat. And so that's when you know, th this is for real now. Right. You don't have to give a lot of explanation or do, I mean, really, it, it is just showing them the truth, showing them what is going on. And it, it's as simple as that. You know, I'm a minister and my policy is always, um, if I can explain a theological concept, that's good. But I'd a lot rather just let somebody read it in the Bible themselves. And so right. this is the same kind of idea. Just show people the truth and they will figure it out. That's exactly right. And we, you know, often on the bus, we'll have women say, oh my gosh, it's got a head, it, it has a head, it, it there's a leg, you know, mm -hmm. you think that in this day and age with, you can see anything on the internet that people would know, but they don't know, no. and, uh, you know, and at the abortion clinics before, they were not showing them the ultrasound, even though they had to have one, they would turn the screen away and tell them, you know, we recommend you don't look, well, of course you recommend you don't look if 89% right. of people change their mind. Well, yeah, I mean, that would be like Taco Bell showing you how their meat is made. Like, if they look, they're not buying the product. That's right. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I, this is so interesting to me because, of course, my initial reaction to the news that Roe v. Wade was overturned and, and Casey was overturned and that this is going to be taken back to the states was, I mean, first of all, just thank God that everything like yeah. this is, is finally uh, come to a head, and, and this is a not not a total victory, but a, a big win in the column for those that are supporters of the issue of life. But then my second thought was, how are people like Miss Robin, like, what are they going to do now? Does the ultrasound bus go away? Like, what is the next step for you guys? Right. Well, our mission statement says we use the power of ultrasound to serve women, save babies, and share Jesus. And just because Roe has been overturned doesn't mean that there's not going to be unplanned crisis pregnancies. Mm -hmm. The women are there. We've just got to work a little harder to find them. But I had um, one of my staff members who's awesome on all this. She looked up the numbers for me. Since we started in 20, we started uh, December 27th of 2016 in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were only going out a couple days a week. And now we're five days a week, um, even looking at Saturdays now. But anyway, she told me that in front of, we've seen 5,085 women as of the end of June, uh, in, I'm sorry, the end of May of this year. Of those 5,085, 920 of them were in front of the abortion clinic. That mm -hmm. means that 82% of the people we're seeing are out in the community anyway. Yeah. You know, so we go uh, on a campus of Alabama State University. 
We go on, right now they're on Atlanta Highway. We go to Coliseum Boulevard. We're over on Carmichael Road. Anywhere that we can, where women gather, where we're more likely to see them, you know? And so we're gonna keep doing exactly what we do. Um, we aren't gonna find, well, actually we were parked in front of the abortion clinic this morning and saw four women this morning. Mm -hmm. So some people just know that we park there and will just come to us. But everybody we meet is not necessarily abortion minded, but everybody we meet isn't gonna tell us either. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Yeah, but we don't see women who have already been to a doctor. So we're seeing women who for sure need prenatal care, who need somebody to love on them. And we also share the gospel with them. So it's a really awesome opportunity for us to, to um, just show them that somebody cares, connect them with community resources and share the gospel if they're open to it. Well, I'm so glad that that was your answer because the thing is there have been accusations and I'm sure you're familiar with this. It's been, this has been an argument for years now. Well, you don't really care about women. You don't really care about babies. You just care about babies before they're born. After they're born, you don't care about them. And I said, as soon as this happened, and I was talking to some friends of mine, I was like, if crisis pregnancy centers and other services like the, the ones you're associated with go away, then that proves their point. That, that proves that really the only reason we were doing this was to stop abortion, and we don't really care about the people that we're helping. Um, and, and so I'm so glad to hear that you guys are going to be able to continue your work on that. I actually think we'll meet more women because they won't be going to the abortion clinic for advice that won't be, they won't be open. And so they'll be able to come to us and we can tell them the truth, commit. And there's so many churches and agencies and nonprofits who are wanting to step out and help women. But if they don't know about it, it's like they don't exist to these women. So that's our job is to connect them with the pregnancy centers, with places like Agape and Lifeline and Catholic Social Services. There's just so many different places that want to help. There really are. And I'm really glad to see that you guys are continuing in that. Uh, one thing that I wanted to ask, and if you don't mind me getting a little too personal, if you if I am, just tell me to back off. Um, but as somebody that actually had an abortion and, and somebody that at the time didn't think there was anything wrong with it, had no moral scruples about it, and, and it wasn't until years later realized uh, what had actually happened. How do people that I think are genuinely of goodwill and, and want to be able to help women, like how do you start that conversation with a woman convincing her that that is something that, that she needs to reconsider if she has had an abortion and, and let her know that um, you don't hate her or don't think that she's going to hell and there's nothing she can be uh, she, she can do to be redeemed? How do you start that conversation? Well, of course, I started by telling my story. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there's, I can't remember a time when I've ever told my story and somebody hasn't walked up to me and said, me too. So I guess if this hasn't been your experience, I hope it's not. You could share, hey, I heard this woman saying this because I promise you they're hurting. They're hurting. It's a wound that does not go away. And I, I, I was talking to a group of pastors and I said, you know, when you meet women who have suicidal thoughts or who have all different kinds of problems, very often when you get down to the bottom of it, they've had an abortion and they're grieving and nobody talks about it. And if you don't talk about it, the enemy has so much power. And so um, it's, like, it's like if you cut your arm really deeply and it's bleeding and you put a pretty dread top on top of it, it's still gonna seep through into everything else. Mm. And that's until you deal with, with the aftermath of it, until you understand that God's grace is right there for you, that forgiveness is there. Um, you're going to suffer. And it's not just women, it's men too who have paid for these abortions or who, whose girlfriend, partner, whatever, um, went ahead and did it without their, you know, without their consent. But they feel, I, I have a driver on one of our buses who told me I paid for two of these. You know, I've mm. seen men weep. So the, the solution is to be able to talk about it because when you bring it out in the open, it takes away, you know, the power that the enemy has. And then the other thing is, uh, pregnancy centers offer abortion healing classes, and that's something that's really good. They're not really crowded because it takes a long time for somebody to get to the point where they're willing to talk about it, but there really are. I went through one once all this happened, and it's really helpful. It is. Well, you know, my last guest, Matt Clark, who's uh, somebody that is a really well-versed in constitutional law, one of the things that he and I got into is in the Alabama law, 
there actually is a provision that allows for abortion in case of mental illness. And I think that that came from a good intention, but bad execution, uh, wherein their whole mentality was, well, if we think that the woman is suicidal, we definitely want her to be able to get an abortion so that um, she will be able to, like, she won't commit suicide or it won't hurt her mental health. And, and as I was telling him, I think kind of the exact opposite is true. Um, that we would just exasperate an already bad situation if we allowed that to go through. And I wanted to get your reaction to that. Well, my niece is a um, nurse practitioner, actually. And she told me that one of the first questions they ask women who are suicidal is, have you had an abortion? Um, so I, I think that says it all. I mean, it just permeates every bit of you because eventually you're going to come to the understanding of what you've done. That's just, it just happens. And then you start to, you know, think about what if, what if, what if, and you feel the shame and, you know, and who am I going to tell? They're going to judge me. So no, he's, he's wrong. I just have to say it. he's wrong. You know, I mean, why, why? Kill well, he wasn't agreeing with it. He was just saying that's the premise of the law, but yeah, yeah. The, the law is wrong. Okay. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll put him off the hook there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a really really serious thing that dogs you you know I always tell people the enemy tempts you to do it and then he dogs you the rest of the life your life for doing it you know and so but, but it's good to know that God's grace covers that mm -hmm. and that there is an answer in the blood of Jesus and so um, you know but but again women have to have someone to come alongside them and tell them hey you know we're for you and so it just. Out of curiosity, is that what it usually takes with a, a woman is just to have some kind of support system, some kind of support group? Is is that like how, how you came to, to peace with everything that has happened in your past? Well, first of all, I think you have to face it. You know, like I said, I was mm -hmm. lying to myself and saying it didn't matter. But the second he talks to me, I burst into tears in the hospital hall, you know, so obviously it was there. Um, I had a very... God had just prepared me so well because for three years before all this happened with Dr. Phillips, I had been watching a TV preacher, which is not something I usually do, but his whole, his, uh, his whole premise was God's grace. And I really learned about God's grace. And when you can apply that to yourself, and then, like I said, I went to first choice and went to healing classes and um, talked to women who had been through it. And I think, you know, like anything that anybody has been through in their life, if you deal with somebody else, who has gone through the same thing, you know, you have that simpatico thing, you know, mm -hmm. to yeah, to yeah, that uh, certainly imparts you with a level of sympathy. Uh, overall, how many women would you say that you've has this organization that you're with and, and showing them the ultrasounds? How many has it saved? I mean, I know you may not have an exact stat on that, but maybe oh, a we, guestimation we counted all the time. Okay, good, good. <laughs> We know, we, what I say, we know of 301 women who told us they were going to have an abortion and then changed their mind when they saw their baby or not necessarily on the bus that they saw it. They sometimes they leave crying, you know, but we follow up and follow up and follow up until we get them connected with community resources or until they just quit answering our phone, you know. And so I say that we know of because I've had this experience twice where women have come up to me with their babies and said, your bus saved my baby. You guys saved my baby. And I say, well, Jesus saved your baby, but I'm so excited, you know, <laughs> and our people on the bus didn't know, you know, so people, women don't always tell all their business to everybody, you know, but we know of 301 and we know of 175 professions of faith since we started too. So that's really that exciting up until the last of last May. Well, you know, it's funny, your explanation there kind of sounded like what I usually say when I'm performing a marriage ceremony. I actually say in the ceremony is like, I'm not marrying you. God's marrying you. I'm That's just, right. I'm just standing here. That's all and saying That's some right. stuff. That's it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. So uh, with all of that, once a woman has seen her, her baby on your bus, and I guess now the option's kind of taken away, but opted to, to keep her baby and, and save her baby's life. What are the options then and what are the next steps that people can do to help them when they're in that situation? Well, let me just say this. The option's not really taken away because now what's happening is 54% of all the abortions done now are pill, abortion pill, um, mm. pills, taking them. This is so horrible. They, they, they market it as at-home abortions. Okay, 
if you're a woman and you have ever been in labor, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in labor by yourself at home with no epidural. That's what's happening and delivering a baby wherever you happen to be. Um, but they don't tell the women this and they're ordering these online. So no doctor, local doctor is involved at all. And the reason we know this is we're starting to see women in the emergency room coming in hemorrhaging. So, um, mm -hmm. There's that. And then there's also what they're calling tourism abortion, where you would go to another state. So that's possible. But most lot, what we're really finding is, is that when a woman first finds out that she's pregnant, and if you're talking to somebody who's scared and pregnant, say, just go look, just go talk to them, see what they have to say. Because people are always surprised by the support that's available in the community. I mean, the churches that have stepped up, the, the, the pregnancy centers are wonderful. They walk the women through and every woman that we meet we refer to a pregnancy center so we want to and there's five local ones here so um it's it's good to connect them if if there is somebody that's listening and is either considering an abortion or maybe has a family member that is considering an abortion something along those lines uh, how would they get in touch with your organization and, and maybe find some resources to help them reconsider that decision well, our number is 334-221-8166, and our website is I-C-U-G-U-M-P, I-C-U-G-U-M-P.com, and you can just go on there. You'll see our, uh, you see our schedule. You don't need an appointment to come see us. It's first come, first serve. You just walk on the bus, um, and I promise you there will be no judgment, but there will be women there who you know, would love to help you. And, and many of them have been through the situation that you're in right there. So we'd love to help you. So that's, that's it. I see you G U M P I see you gump.com. All right. And I always end every interview that I do with this because, you know, sometimes as an interviewer, I can't always anticipate everything. Is there anything that our audience should know anything that you would like to tell them uh, that I might not have thought to ask about? I would like to tell people that your audience that in the United States, one in four women will have an abortion before the age of 45. That's in your church, in your office, in your school, in your family, and they're hiding it because they're ashamed. And so it would be good to be able to start the conversation and without all this, you know, woman's rights or whatever, her right is to know to know where she stands and what her op what her options are. That's what I really feel. And, and so I would just like you to know that it's everywhere. And as long as we keep quiet about it, it'll still be shameful. We need to bring it out and help them. Well, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome back on the program anytime. Just let me know. I appreciate it, Caleb. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Thank you. You have a good one. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe. <laughs>